Hey, this is a match once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request from Corey. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, uh, tier lists, video game playthroughs, let's plays, let's tries, whatever the case may be, topic, whatever, PayPal is usually the best bet or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. So Corey wanted to have my thoughts on this upcoming documentary, which there was an indie dodo for, which I'm not going to ask anyone to donate, especially because I think it's been donated anyway. This is from years and years ago. And it's Heart of Darkness, The Making of the Final Friday, a.k.a. Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, it got quite a bit from indie dodo. There's been updates saying that they're almost done. They're almost done. How much is almost done? I don't know. I know from many of these documentaries, they take forever to do. And on, especially if you want to interview people, then the whole thing happened where people couldn't leave and people were being infected and all the other stuff. And not to get into all that. Uh, the last update was November of 2023, so there's been no update that I could find for 2024 as to when this is supposed to come out. I'm sure 2023 would have been the better bet because that would have been an anniversary since it came out in 1993. <clears throat> this is why, I mean, I do look forward to this because on the one side, I love documentaries. I love documentaries on movies. And yes, Jason Goes to Hell is my favorite Friday the 13th film. So before I get into that, let me explain that for a bit. Because I know it's a very divided movie. It's a very much a love or hated movie. Most people hate it. But I do enjoy it. I remember seeing it as a kid on VHS tape. And I didn't know as much about Friday the 13th as other people did. So I kind of saw it as his own venture this horror slasher bit of a creature feature that was insanely violent and gory it was a pretty short to the point film it had some ambition and creativity it's like oh we got the sequel to the hidden that i wanted because i do like the hidden but the hidden 2 sucks and there's like a much better version of that sequel and then i found the other friday 13th later and most of them i like most of them i do enjoy to different extents Really, the only one I hate is Party Jason Tate's Manhattan, which I think that's more of a disservice than this one. That one, it promises Jason Tate to Manhattan. He took a lunch break. He took a boat trip. He didn't take any Manhattan. I mean, Crotto Dundee, Dundee terrorized it more than Jason Voorhees when he went to Manhattan. So I, that movie, I think, sucks. Although I do like the song Darker Side of the Night. Here though. Uh, what was I trying to say? I like the lead guy John D. LeMay. It was cool. I mean you had a leading man in Tom Matthews. As. Tommy. But then there's always the back of your head that it is his fault that this is happening. So while I do like Friday the 13th Part 6. It's still that it is still your fault, but he does apologize. He tries to rectify it, but it's still your fault that people are dying because you try to leave things alone and you decide to slam that damn metal pole up his ass and then became the Frankenstein monster, rejuvenated by lightning. Here, John D. LeMay is just a guy who's minding his own business. He's going to rescue his wife. Now, his wife is a pain in the ass and a very unlikable character, which makes me root for John D. LeMay more. Because even though she's a pain in the ass, he's going to help her and also save his baby. I, in retrospect, I like that Terminator vibe. Like, John D. LeMay is like Kyle Reese. They got to protect Sarah Connor and the baby that's not born yet. Same with here. Protect her and the, the born baby. So I like that it had a bit more of an action element. Uh, it had a bit more of that Terminator vibe. The, the basis of the plot. John D. LeMay was likable. If you want gore, it gives you gore. If it if you want nudity, it gives you nudity. I mean, it gives you more gore than I would say any other Friday the 13th film. You could maybe argue Freddy vs. Jason, to be fair. But, I mean, the other Friday the 13th is definitely the goriest of the first 
hell, ten of them. Uh, some of the supporting characters I did not mind, especially Stephen Williams. Uh, Jace is not in it. Well, he's not in the first film a lot. He's a little kid. It's an old woman throwing people around like she's a football player somehow. Uh, Jason really isn't around part two a whole lot. Like you see his point of view, but actually physically seeing Jason. I would ask people, how much do you physically see Jason in part two and part three, even to extent part four? How much do you actually physically see Jason until the third act? Most of these is up until the third act. The rest of it is a point of view, and you see a hand, a point of view, you see a hand do this, a hand grabs someone and stabs someone, a hand pushing someone there, and maybe you briefly see, if it's the hockey mask, you see none of that in part two. Part five, that's not Jason, it's a guy in a hockey mask, but you don't see, it's not Jason, again, a lot of this like point of view shots. Most of part five, it's point of view, hands doing this, hand. I mean, you see a lot more hands than Jason. So it's like, the Jason's not in it. He's not in most of the fucking movies. It's more his damn hands. <laughs> you see his hands more than some people's dicks and pornos. But I mean, and so that's, what, that's why it didn't bother me. It wasn't Freddy Krueger who has a voice and a personality. And I find the film fast-paced, entertaining, and ambitious. It's trying to do like certain shots, like when they shoot... In the diner and the camera zooms in to the thing that blows up the power and the gore try to be creative like elbowing the person the chin goes all the way into the person's face um, I don't mind the music I don't mind the look of Jason I don't mind that they want this demon quality because Jason's backstory doesn't make sense anyway he's a kid who drowned but his mom didn't go look for him all those years or did she or did she abandon him, even though I, apparently he was alive? And then Jason cares so much for his mom that he didn't decide to go to his mom, even though he's a kid, and then when he's 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 25, doesn't decide to go to his mom, but then on that one day sees his mom got her head cut off, and a year later decides to, what, find a phone book and see, this is where she is in the phone book. She's better than some cops to find where the people are at. None of the Friday 13 films made sense. I enjoy them as cheeseburgers, though. You know, they're, they're they may not be good for me, but they're entertaining. So that's, maybe I just I don't take it that seriously. And Jason knows how I thought was slickly shot. Uh, I like the cast for the most part. I don't. I'm not big on the girl that plays John D. LeMay's ex. Uh, like her acting's fine, but her character's kind of unlikable and bitchy. I think it was ambitious for what it was trying to do. I like some of the makeup effects. Like I said, I think it's a fun film. I think it's an entertaining film. And there's a bit more going on than just the typical, typical formula. And I have to really root for John D. LeMay. I really like his character. I have to relate to his character in a way. So, going on all that. I know people don't like it to each their own. We agree or disagree. I love the film. I could go in depth, but this is about this, not a review of the movie. <laughs> But yeah, this started in, I guess, 2019, December 1st, 2019, some backers. And pretty much going through the indie dog of what's on part of this documentary. Uh, it's a very divided film. Some love it, some hate it. Thought it was the epitome of cinematic garbage. Just said there are so many questions. Perkin asked Adam Marcus anything you want. I won't mind the, the talk with Adam Marcus. I know Pizzow got just as he taught him of Adam Marcus, but I mean, I, I'm a nobody. Right? So, apparently, people that will be in the documentary will be. Because what Corey asked about this is do you react to the Indie Dodo promo and what you hope to see in this documentary? Mainly, says this is your favorite Friday 13th. Also, I'm not trying to get you to donate all messages for your thoughts on what I hope the documentary will be. Oh, yeah, there's a trailer. I'll react to that at the end. I see that. It's on Vimeo, three minutes long. I'll react to that in a bit. I'm just going to go through what's on here. Adam Marcus, made sense. Robert Kurtzman, the K of KMB. That'd be cool to see how some of the makeup effects were done. John D. LeMay, I would love to hear his thoughts on the film. Uh, 
Now a filmmaker in his own right, John will be coming on board to share some of his experience as well as the fan reactions he has received over the years of his Friday fame. I mean, I would like to say, hey, I'm a big fan. I love you. It's my favorite character in the Friday 13 films. I love his character. Stephen Williams, I mean, if they did Stephen Williams, that's actually pretty cool because he rarely does interviews to eliminate his process training that I kind of bounty hunter. I did like his character too. Rusty Schrimmer as Joey B, that'd be cool to hear. Uh, I loved when he's dead mad. It's like, like, tell like, shut that baby up or something. <laughs> uh, Agent Elizabeth Marcus. Oh, that's the girl at the, the beginning of the film. NCAA gymnast. The babe who newt Tiana on Point Break. I didn't know that. She was in the Scorpion team. Wow, I didn't know all that. Guess she was in a yeah, Roadhouse. Cool. Richard Grant, Richard Dant. Uh, that's a guy I've seen in quite a few films. Yeah, he was the the Don Teen wannabe in Rocky V. Touch me, and I'll sue. He eats the Jason. Yeah, I would like to hear his thoughts on it. Tip Marcus. Well, I think it's related to Adam Marcus. He play. I, I didn't mind him. Andrew Block, who played Josh. He's one of the guys that gets possessed. The guy was a bit more bald. Michael B. Silver. Oh, he's one of the... He's the guy of the three teens out in the woods that get killed. Alexis. Uh, one of the girls that gets killed uh, when they're at, at with the tents. Baby Stephanie. A few surprise fan favorite cast members to be revealed along the way in our behind-the-scenes updates. Uh, oh, it's directed by Edwin Samuelson. Producer and interview Peter Bratty. Okay. So, I mean, not as much as the crew, it seems. It's more of the cast, which is cool. The fast John... Like, if you did John D. LeMay and Stephen Williams, that's pretty good for me. But, I mean, maybe some of the crew. Harry Manfredini. Tina... I'm surprised Tina Otter, but... Maybe Ken Arthur, he's not really like a big fan of the movie. I know he doesn't have a whole lot to do. He wasn't a fan of the look of Jason, but I'm surprised Ken Hodder's not on here. But I haven't looked at the trailer yet, so. But I mean, before I look at it, I mean, just to hear, I, I know the setup of the film, but I don't know if they'll go into this, but I wonder if he'll go into Sean S. Cunningham talking shit about him. And apparently Sean Cunningham is full of crap. I don't know if they're going to that because maybe they'll think it's a bit too of a heated topic. But uh, I remember his interview with Pizzow. That was like the most fascinating thing about how Sean Cunningham said that it was all Adam Marcus's fault that Jason's mask isn't in there. And Adam Marcus, I buy his story more. He's going, look, I'm a guy who's never done a film before. I'm 20-some years old. I'm going to tell New Line Cinema... That by the way, this product you bought, I'm just going to take the hockey mask out. And they allowed me, a newbie, to just do that. Go, yeah, sure, go ahead and do it. No, they would allow that if Sean S. Cunningham said, because he's, you know, the Sean S. Cunningham who directed the first, brings you the last, you know, the part of the marketing. I believe Adam Marcus' story that, you know, Sean was like, get that damn hockey mask out of there. And I, Adam Marcus, the way he described it makes sense. Sean S. Cunningham, I think he doesn't like Friday the 13th. Sean wanted to make soccer family pictures. Kids, you know, Bad News Bears with soccer, you know, those kind of pictures and TV shows. and That's what Sean S. Cunningham wanted to do. But he did this horror film, Friday the 13th, to kind of get in the door, and he became synonymous with it. And he's not into it. He's, I don't think he's into that stuff. And that's why the sequel is he's kind of like, you guys do whatever you want. My name's on it, whatever. He didn't come up with the hockey mask. He didn't direct the film with the hockey mask. So now, anybody who looks at Sean Cunningham, they'll look at a creation that's not his. He didn't create the hockey mask and the hulking adult Jason and all that stuff. Sean S. Cunningham had nothing to do with that. Wes Craven had everything to do with Freddy Krueger. And then, of course, Robert Englund's performance. Sean Cunningham, that's why I say Sean Cunningham is not a, much of a filmmaker to me. 
The first Friday the 13th I think is okay, but I think it's mediocre compared to a lot of the sequels. And yes, I will say, I enjoy, hey, Adam Marcus, if you ever see this, I'm not just saying this to kiss your ass. Jason Goes to Hell, I think, is a better directed movie than the first Friday the 13th. I said it and I maintain it. With camera shots, camera angles, zooms, there's more to the directing of that movie than the original Friday the 13th. And now you have Sean Cunningham who he's stuck with this because it makes him the money. He tried to do other films. I don't mind Deep Star 6, but it wasn't this great big hit. He tried to do other films, they did nothing. He has a career, he has money, he has all these houses because of this. So I want to do something to move on, get that hockey mask out of there. Sean Cunningham has a reason to lie, because if you hear that story, you go, what? How dare he? He's, he's Friday the 13th. Adam Marcus has no reason to lie. Now, I don't agree with Adam Marcus on everything. I absolutely disagree with him on Tessa Chainsaw 3D. I think that's a piece of shit. I think the idea of that's a piece of shit. You're telling me that I'm supposed to be mad at the vigilante group going after these killer psycho cannibals that are murdering people? No. The vigilantes, if they're all Charles Bronson's, shoot them all in the face. Be my guess. Shoot all the cannibals in the face. Because they're cannibals. I absolutely despise... Yeah, that movie's different, but I think that movie's a piece of shit. I think Jason Goes is actually a good movie. But again, it was all subjective. It's nerds arguing about movies. That's the fun of it. Instead of talking about all this political BS nowadays with the MCU and all that stuff. It's fun arguing about movies. We're nerds arguing about movies. That's the entertaining part of it. But yeah, this documentary, I'll look at the trail in a bit, but I just don't want it to be one of those things where it's apologizing for the film half the time. Yeah, I know the film's bad. Yeah, I know the film's this. No, I mean, I enjoy the film. I don't want to see a documentary where most of the people are like, yeah, the film sucks. Yeah, the film sucks. Yeah, the film sucks. Well, I like the film, so I'm feeling, I mean, if you, if that's their honest opinion, they have a right to it, I understand that, but... I'm, I don't want to be like, hey, I'm at this party. Then everybody's like, oh, no one's enjoying this party. I'm the asshole in the middle of the party that's the only one enjoying this party. Great. Dun, dun, dun. So. I hope at least some of the people are like me and enjoyed and proud of the film. I think they should be proud to do something different, but, you know, I, I know I got very much hated. But I hope they know there are people like me who are fans of it. I, I hope so. But yeah, if it's just going to be constant apologizing, apologizing, yeah, we know the film sucks, I'm like, I don't really want to watch that shit. <laughs> That's just me, though. But I mean, who knows? Like I say, it's cool that John D. LeMay and Stephen Williams, that, those are two I'm most interested in. I, I like the other people they chose. I'm surprised Kane Hodder's not on there, but maybe they didn't show that. Maybe some of the crew members. Like I said, I don't know if they're going to go into those Shonis Cunningham, if they think that'd be too hostile but i would love because i think that's an interesting story i think that's a good point of view and you know the guy has a right to defend himself and but i don't know if they'll put that in but i hope they do but i doubt they will i'll say this fuck sean cunningham this is this is probably why i couldn't interview uh adam marcus because i'd be like fuck sean cunningham like Shh, don't don't say that don't say that i'm like okay well because i'm i'm more the asshole but Anyway, uh, let's get to this trailer. It's from Vimeo. It's on their page. Uh, just type in Indiegogo, Hearts of Darkness, the make of the final Friday. And then, again, it's on their page. Indiegogo promo. I'm not going to show it because I don't want to steal their video. 3, 2, 1, pressing play. Friday 13th, yep. I don't hate the original Friday the 13th. I think it's okay. Pamela Voorhees. Cinematic time of death. 1 hour 20 minutes 1 second. Oh. They're showing like. Wow we killed Jason so quickly. That's an interesting way to start it. So it's going through all the films. Like when Jason dies in the movie.
new beginning not Jason this time Roy Burns yeah about an hour and 20 some, some minutes in each one okay they went through the first five days goes to hell I think for part nine it was fine to change it up a bit I think in this case it was entertaining seven minutes in what Oh, there's Adam Marcus, okay. He seems like a cool guy. Yeah, Voorhees is misspelled. I think they mentioned that on the commentary, because I listened to the commentary, it's like someone screwed up, and they didn't have time to redo it. If you think you know... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the most controversial entry, yeah. 23 years old. That are showing clips of the film. Like I said, I looked at the way the film looked, the lighting in the diner, some of the, like the demon creature effects. I, I appreciate that stuff. That was ambitious. Okay, that's it. Okay. I mean. I guess I was hoping that they were going to like show, okay, we got some interviews so far, we got this person, we got this person, this person, but if you back it, then we could get more people. But no, it was more just kind of the first part, well, it took this long for Jason to die. It took this long for, I, I don't know about that being the selling point at the beginning of it. I mean, I thought I was going to show more about what, like maybe they got a couple interviews, but they want to do more and see so they want to do more here's what we're hoping for it's more of just like I, said, I thought the the beginning portion I, I think for a lot of people they didn't really care about that but I did is to set up this whole way but he's dead already what the hell so I, I I did the reasoning for that. I guess, I guess for a promo, I expected a bit too much about what the actual product will be, other than, okay, he's going to answer some questions. I mean, some of them, he mentioned on the commentary. Like, I listened to the commentary he did with the, the writer. It was a very fun commentary, commentary on the DVD. I think they, they have it on the, the Blu-ray. Although the Blu-ray, they screwed up by stream factory because they cut out a gore scene for some stupid reason so but anyway do i have try to see sorry one second one second actually make it one minute because uh, i have the stream factory one Did I put it? I thought I had it over here. I swear I do have it over here. I have it over here. I know I do. Why am I not finding it? I have to find it later. I might. Oh, there it is. Funny enough, not even on purpose. It's right here at the top. I do have the official one. So yes, I did get it. I also got this one. I got this one as well because it has the stuff fixed. 
plus it has so you see i have the actual disc from stream factory so i did pay the money for it but i have this other one because it has the true unrated version and it's got the work print and i wanted the work print so there you go and i like this cover as well i think that's a cool cover i look forward to it though i don't know when it's coming out like i said the the last update was november 2023 i'll, I'll read that thursday november 9th 2023 live stream on facebook and youtube answering all your questions about hearts of darkness when do i do my blu-ray when's it coming out could you be more hand <laughs> being fun i guess it's on jc goes to hell the final fan group page august they said we're almost complete film is finished the picture is locked our soundtrack is just days away from completion it will only have to go through color timing this week sound mix the week after and then has to be seen by our legal team and then we're done now that was august of 2023 so the blu-ray is close to four hours of amazing stuff i mean if it's really four hours i would love to to pick it up but i don't even know when it's going to come out i don't know if it's going to be much of a release in terms of sorry you should have backed it or it's too late well i should be picked up by anything studio wise or is it just gonna be on a website again there's really no info on it i say remember what was that group that other group that was doing that police academy documentary and that disappeared i don't know what happened like i don't know what it is like some of these documentaries is just i guess it's the legal issues maybe or something to that effect like this is 2019 so it's that's five years ago and that's why i know it's very selfish but that's why i don't back stuff because i could be patient up to a point but like five years and still no word i'm not saying it could be done in five days or five weeks but come on now same with what institution the story of police academy this four-part police academy documentary I'm like, well, where to go? This says September 5th, 2023. Four part limited series to be released for the fourth anniversary of the original film. Well, when did the original film come out? March 1984. Well, it's April 1984, and the 40th anniversary passed, <laughs> and they didn't update since September. Well, I get it. There's delays. There's delays, but you know, not, none in, none in. Uh, Twenty twenty four yet of any updates. That's a bit weird. I know I'm not saying, oh, they're ripping people. No, I'm, they're not ripping people off. I would assume. But I would like to see it. I'd like to hear any bits of info because I do like the movie. I like to hear from the actors. Um, again, what I heard about the Voorhees mailbox being misspelled is someone screwed up. And I guess they didn't. Have, it might have been second unit that shot that because it was a hit to shoot. Because, you know, they didn't have a lot of time to shoot it and it was more ambitious than other friday 13 films so it's like oh some second you shot and they didn't care i would assume that was the case could very well be wrong and i would love to watch this stuff i know there's a bit in the the crystal lake memories documentary as well about the making of the film so john d Lemay does talk about it in there a bit which is nice but more in depth cool steven williams very cool so i, I look forward to it I would gladly pick up a copy. But uh, when it'll come out, I don't know. That, again, that's why that RoboDot documentary, didn't it take like almost 10 years, it feels like, for that to come out? And they say it was going to be all these sequels, and it's only the first one. So what about all these other sequels? Well, we don't know that you say you don't talk about. And, you know, 
I'm just too finicky with my money on that. Hey, congrats to the people that put their money in. Wait, what was that one group that they was going to do this Aliens documentary on the 1986 film? And the whole year, there's going to be all these streams. I never heard anything about that ever again. And they wanted to pay $100 for the Blu-ray. Uh, not f Blu-ray. $100 for the Blu-ray. $100. One of my favorite films, but $100? I would assume this is not going to be $100. <laughs> but you see, I'm very cynical. I'm very pessimistic on anything and everything, just my nature. But... At the end of my tears about it, absolutely, because I enjoy this film. I'm one of the few. I know my friend Michael CP likes the film. I know my friend Afri likes the film. I think Corey, who requested, doesn't mind the film. So there's some of us fans out there. I'm curious about it. Who knows how much? Who knows when it'll be coming out? We'll see. If anybody has news on it, feel free to comment down below. So thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye bye for now.